Oh, snap, we're recording. All right, what is up, guys? And welcome back to Late to the Party, or as I like to call it, Late to the Party, um, where we look at movies that are over 10 years old. Uh, and um, yeah, we take a look at them through new eyes, fresh set of eyes. Uh, nobody needs glasses. Actually, that's a lie. Isaac does. Um, uh, <laughs> uh, but this week, uh, thanks to the uh, Wheel of Misfortune, uh, we had the pleasure and the honor of uh, getting to watch in its original format the uh, 1954 uh, classic and very important movie, if I do say so myself, uh, Godzilla. Uh, it was uh, directed, it came out in 1954, so it meets our criteria, and uh, directed by Ishiro Honda, with, uh, I don't want to uh, butcher the other actors and actresses' names, so a lot of great folks worked on that movie. Um, if you're not familiar, if you haven't, uh, you know, you, you, it. I would have to say Godzilla is, you know, pretty much up there, almost like Mickey Mouse. Like if you say the name Mickey Mouse, they're going to know who you're talking about. Almost the same way you're going to say Godzilla, they're going to know who you're talking about. Um, but 1954, I had never sat down to watch the entire movie and I considered myself a Godzilla fan. But that all changed this weekend. Um, finally got to sit down, watch it. And oh, my God. <clears throat> No secret how I felt about it. I loved it. Every freaking piece of it. Um, but enough about what I got to say. Nate, what's up with you, baby? What did you think? Oh, it's a super iconic movie. We talk about franchises. And uh, what do they got? 23, 24 movies? I think this is the most successful franchise of all time. They got more out here than James Bond, if I believe, if I'm not, if I'm not wrong. And... Uh, you know, they're all over the place. Sometimes he's a good guy. Sometimes he's a bad guy. He goes to space. He can fly around backwards. They got all those weird things on the island with Godzuki. Like, super iconic movie for sure. Practical Isaac. Effect. Oh, yeah. What's Isaac, what's up? What's up? Oh, uh, dude, I love this movie. It was perfect. Black and white. Uh, subtitles. Awesome action. It was fun. I, I sat down and watched it, and I uh, remember I watched it, and I was pretty sleepy, and I fell asleep. And when I woke up, it was over. That was months back when I found out I was on on uh, HBO Max, but I watched it nice and awake and was able to watch everything go down and the story, and I was like, oh, so this makes sense now. Oh, that makes sense. And then you sent us something with the toy, and I was like, oh, that toy does make sense now. And yeah, that dude in the in the aqua suit holding that bomb, and he has the reflection of Godzilla. And I was like, I had never seen that because again, I fell asleep through the movie when I first watched it. But it was good. It was really fun. Uh, I love the costume. I wish they still did them like that. But I know uh, we gotta we gotta improve the visuals. My man Lego. What did you think? Uh, I was pleasantly surprised. This movie was super cool. Um, I'd seen the uh, the updated version, King of the Monsters, back when I was a wee lad, a young Lego lass. Um, but we, um, I don't know, man. Like there was just, I was really expecting to see this movie and be like, it was okay, but it's more of like a legacy sort of thing where it spawned like you know, 36 movies, something like that, 35 movies. I and, think 125. You know, <laughs> I, w I wouldn't doubt it. But, <clears throat> you know, I was I was really expecting to just see it as like, okay, they showed like a cool monster. They kind of like, maybe almost like a proof of concept. Like, it's okay, but not really, not really there. And uh, it, it delivered. I mean, there were a few things that were dated, and there were a few things that I I didn't necessarily care for, but overall it was a solid solid movie. Scott, take it away. Okay, dude, this movie was great. 
I wasn't expecting this at all. I was expecting a cheesy foam rubber suit guy running around the classic goofy, you know, that kind of like movement. And I, I don't, this, this is the first time I've seen this one and I love it. And it's a, it's a horror movie. It's not just a, a Godzilla. Mon this really was a horror movie because they bring up not only is there the monster, but there's also, you know, the, the fear still of, of the, uh, the attack of Nagasaki, they bring that up. There's a lot of history in this too. And the fear of the people, I like that, that little clip where you, the three people are on the, the subway and they're like, what are we gonna do with Godzilla? First, I had to move and evacuate because of the bombings. And now I'm gonna have to evacuate because of this giant lizard thing that nobody knows what's going on about. It, it just had a lot of, it had a lot of like references that I just wasn't expecting. This was a smart horror, monster movie and i really really enjoyed this i just i was i was stunned really i love it <laughs> yeah this 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 movie impressed me because uh my recollections of godzilla from my childhood you know watching watching those movies on a saturday afternoon uh is is for all the goofy stuff you know with godzuki dancing around and this kind of thing and i kind of expected that. <laughs> yeah right <laughs> and i expected that kind of that kind of motif to be coming out but this movie was a lot more you know it was a horror movie there's a lot of there's a lot of cultural angst going on in the movie it's it was really uh, a whole lot deeper than i would have uh, even imagined so it was it was solid well you could tell that this movie was made with like passion the way that yeah. they wrote it they wrote it the way he he came out of when we first saw him like you only get a glimpse of him and they lead to him and they lead to him and then we just finally see him destroying it's just like damn dude this took a lot of a lot of thought and process of just how much they t who was it toho who created godzilla and he like really put that passion into it. and it, it was it was really you can tell from this movie how great it was and i want to touch on something that liz brought up because um, it's very well documented and well known that this movie was, you know, obviously it, it referenced and it uh, it talks a lot about the, uh, you know, like the atomic age anxiety that uh, existed uh, throughout Japan. Obviously, it was made about a decade after the bombs were dropped. <clears throat> so, uh, you know, you see the imagery uh, on the television when uh tokyo's in flames and it was a callback to that you know to to that uh to those horrible events uh, a lot of kids being left as orphans um you know uh, uh p kids yeah uh, people dying from radiation poisoning and uh the reason i bring it up is like w how do you guys think or, or or what's your opinions on them using this film as a i guess you could say a coping mechanism you know, they, they talk about radioactivity, they talk about, you know, bombs, and that's one of the major themes, you know. <clears throat> you got Dr. Uh, uh, Serizawa, who's scarred from World War II, being the one to create the weapon that they ultimately use. But, you know, obviously in Japan and this movie, radioact you know, radioactivity, radioactive bombs, they're not seen in a good light. Meanwhile, in the West, radioactivity is responsible for creating Spider-Man and the Hulk and the Fantastic Four. So, I mean, what, do you, what, what would you, did you guys look, did you guys think about that or, or did anybody have any, or does anybody have anything to say about that? Uh, go for it. Oh, yeah, go for it, <laughs> go ahead, go ahead. Yeah, sorry, I just kind of threw it out there. <laughs> I, I was just going to say, um, I picked up on a lot of that stuff when I was, when I was watching the film. You could, you could get the sense of their their um, lingering anxiety. And it occurred to me while I was watching the movie, like you said, that this movie was only nine years, you know, was released nine years after the atomic bomb drops that occurred in 45. And I realized that that, that movie was closer to those events than we are to 9-11. Um, you know, 9-11 was like 20 years ago. And so... You know, we had a lot of cultural angst about those events, you know, in our lifetimes. And so, you know, these people were closer to that. It was much more real to them. 
I appreciated that on one level because it gives this movie about a you know a giant radioactive undersea lizard. Uh, it gives it a lot more gravity. Um, yeah, I, I mean, I got I got more to say about it about that, but I, I think that's that's a good place to start anyway. Yeah. Yeah, definitely. Um, I'll just kind of piggyback on that a little bit. Um, <clears throat> it's it's obviously something that that the Japanese people have had to process for many years. I mean, we we recently watched Akira, and it was very much the same anxiety, and that was '88. So it's it's not something that's gone away from their culture. It's it's very much something that every generation has to think about and and it's understandable why i mean it's it's a force of nature and it's probably a good thing that it's not going away i would say you know it, it needs to be confronted it needs to be addressed and godzilla remaining popular and and people understanding and having to confront that issue of you know human suffering and scientific advancement and all that other stuff that all these themes that are in the movie. I, I think that's a really good thing. So I'm glad that we're getting another Godzilla movie in a week or two. <clears throat> right. <laughs> and we could watch it in theaters. Uh, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, we can. Yeah. Um, like I said, I already, I, I'm kind of repeating myself at this point, but I just found that interesting that um, how they were viewing you know, radioactive bombs and all that. And meanwhile, here in the West, it's creating our heroes. But over there, it's just creating more chaos. And it's mm -hmm. just chaos upon chaos. And the line that stood out to me, and, you know, I'll, I'll jump into, you know, my favorite scene was the uh, argument between uh, Dr. Serizawa and the uh, other gentleman, uh, or is it the lady, where she's asking him to use the bomb. Oh, it's the couple. They come to visit him to use the bomb so that they can get rid of him. And he just says something around the lines like, Bombs versus bombs, missiles versus missiles, and now a super weapon to throw upon us all. But he's very well aware, you know, he's already seen what World War II did. He's seen what, you know, the destruction in, uh, in uh, Japan, and they want him to continue to contribute to that. And then he adds on top of that, even if I destroy all the files, it's still here. And who am I to say that I won't be coerced one day into using it again? So it, it kind of weighs heavy on, on, you know, his ultimate sacrifice. And uh, I just, I was just so taken back by that scene alone that I was blown away. I was like, I, I, I just absolutely love this movie and everything that it's saying. And this is back in 54. Um, so I don't know. I mean, uh, uh, Isaac, your favorite scene, buddy. Hmm. I don't know. That'll be when he's full on just destroying everything <laughs> and he gets on fire and he's just <laughs> whipping his tail and he, when he first gets electrocuted and he's like, you know what? Let me take care of this. And he just melts that, those, uh, those electricities. Oh, so good. <laughs> that whole scene, the whole attack. <laughs> the fact Sorry, that they people. had the atomic blast since the very beginning. I was, I love yeah. that. <laughs> yeah. Glowing um, spines and everything, you know? <laughs> right. That was brilliant. Um, Lego favorite scene, buddy. Um, I really liked, it was right towards the beginning of the film when uh, I believe it was right before Godzilla showed up and it was it was a really small scene and it was actually like a transition, but I thought it was so brilliant. And it just really showed to me that the people making this movie had like a really like artistic touch. And you were, so you were following the boat and you see the wake of the waves and you have these little like crests right in the water. And then it transitions to the top, the ridge line of the mountains where Godzilla is about to appear. And then it transitions to the roof line of the small village. And you just see this parallel in these, you know, this ridge shape. And I just thought that was really brilliant and just a really cool, you know, small thing that just like, it adds to the beauty of the movie. And especially in a movie like this, where it's all destruction, and chaos I, I really liked that we saw like some parallels and a little bit of beauty absolutely nate i liked how deluded the people were when those uh the weakest special effect in the movie was when the airplanes came and you could obviously see the wires 
It was like one <laughs> step ahead of a hand holding the airplanes. But uh, <laughs> it was shooting some missiles at Godzilla, and they're like, oh, we scared him. He's running away. Like, motherfucker, you guys have been shooting tanks and artillery. Like, he's only leaving because your whole Lego city is toast now. <laughs> and he's like wants to go to the map that he fucked you all up. So that, that was kind of out. <laughs> you didn't win, motherfucker. You didn't win. Come on, man, with your shitty planes. You didn't win. Took a lot of uh, out of them to destroy that place. <laughs> <laughs> he just dropped the mic on Tokyo and just walked away. <laughs> it's like later, suckers. He even had a subway sandwich in the middle of it. <laughs> <laughs> that was like product placement before it even, <laughs> uh, even existed. It was, yeah, man, it was so crazy how much destruction they actually showed. And I feel like they had their own, um, you remember Titanic when the old couple is uh, laying in bed, they're getting ready to die. And the uh, mom is, is telling that story to the kids. And then you have in Godzilla, you have the mom telling the kids, we're going to go with daddy. And she's hugging him as oh. the creature's just coming by. I was like, holy crud, this, this got dark really, really quick. <laughs> Scott, what did you guys love? I loved the fact that Josh read all the subtitles to me with passion and vigor. <laughs> because it, we were watching it on my phone. <laughs> and our site wasn't so good and no um that was fun no i think <laughs> i know he was really good <laughs> i was feeling it um I, I think it's what i like i said it's it's just the it's just those little just those little tidbit things like you were talking about the the mother and the dot you know holding her kid i mean that's not a that's not a fun scene but it just adds to the um the depth of the movie the the scene that i mentioned before with them being in the subway talking about the bomb um the one when they were in after all the devastation and the the lady gets picked up and the kid just starts you just hear this kid wailing you don't even you know it's off screen but you hear the kid wailing and you go over to see what it is and it's just the child just uh, you know it's the the emotion that was in this one like i said i was going into this expecting something goofy like Godzuki, like the rubber suit and just these monsters being thrown at each other and then who's gonna you know this guy fell over so obviously Mothra is gonna win this battle part of it you know what I mean and in the suits type type fight and at the beginning because I think I had that mindset when they were you know little things like when they were testing the radiation okay this is super radioactive but we're gonna stay here and do this the rest of you guys, it's not safe for you. Stay back. Like, but when those little scenes, this is a movie then, what I was expecting. And when I look back on it, I have to go back and watch it again to have that, that mindset. But it, it's just those little, those little cut scenes like that were my favorites in this movie that added that extra emotional like level to the, to something that I wasn't expecting. And I really enjoyed that. Yeah, there's, there's a lot of scenes that can be picked uh, as, as a favorite one, but uh, early on in the film, when Godzilla is approaching the Odo Island, and the islanders uh, are like trying to puzzle out why there's like no fish to be had, you know, with their fishing boats, and then you know Grandpa comes out and he starts talking about the legend of Godzilla, and they have this, they have this ceremony, and he's explaining to his grandson like what the ceremony is about and how in the old days, you know, when these events would happen, that they would offer up a a sacrificial victim to appease Godzilla. And then the the <laughs> the young girls like start laughing about it like, oh grandpa, you know, this, that, and the other. And he's like, I would teach you cows to Godzilla. <laughs> 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 I was like, that is that's fantastic. This old man is, if you dishonor our traditions, I'll feed you to you cows to Godzilla myself. <laughs> oh, I was laughing so hard. It was so good. Josh always likes the crotchy old guys. Yeah, man. <laughs> He's an old spirit, he is. Um, yeah, man, I, I, you know, I, I, I think one of the uh, other things that's uh, maybe not overlooked but um, isn't touched on as much 
and I kind of want to get your guys' um, view on it, was also uh, his death scene. You know, spoilers alert, Godzilla dies. Um, you know, at least in this one, I don't think they were anticipating the uh, the amount of sequels that they ended up making, but um, <laughs> you you almost felt sorry for him, and I think the people in the film felt sorry. Like, they, it, it was almost like a very sad scene. It was uh, very ambivalent, and it was very... God, like, I didn't even know what to expect from that. Like, I was just kind of like, wow, like, they look sad, so it's making me sad. And it's almost like it was a necessary evil thing to do. But it was still sad. And I don't know, did anybody else pick up on that? Was that just me? No, no I, 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 dad I, was I, for sure. Yeah, I was going to say that the, the scientist, the father of the, the main girl, Emiko, yeah, he, he was all, the, throughout the whole film, he wanted to study and understand Godzilla and here they are like aiming to put an end to him um yeah I uh I definitely got the sense though that it was sad and it was surprising because I, I don't recall any other Godzilla films where he bites it um so it was a big surprise when that happened yeah he he's sleeping and they go to drop off the bomb to him and he wakes up and it's just like oh man let him sleep dude like why are you gonna drop the bomb on him right now while he's sleeping, <laughs> like come on man and then he just <laughs> again, like, turns it and then he just turns it to bone <laughs> to <get him. laughs> i was like whoa i did not expect and again, that either yeah, and again, being underwater, like just watching their facial reactions and watching the, the creature kind of just be in a panic and be in pain. Again, the absence of noise. I, I don't I don't recall if there was any music, but I thought that was great, too. Um, with all this said, buckets, boys. Where is Godzilla on the bucket scale? Scott, let's start off with you. Um, this, this one's a 10 for me. I always like the Godzilla movies, um, but this one, I'm really pissed at myself for not watching it sooner, because <laughs> this is like <laughs> the real Godzilla right here. It's almost like you can watch this movie, and then you can skip all the middle stuff, although it's somewhat fun, and then just go to the King of the Monsters stuff, because you can see that the people that I think did King of the Monsters, there's a lot of parallels between the original and then this new King of the Monster one and, or, you know, just even the regular Godzilla. I mean, they even bring the name Sir, Sir, Zaw, Sir I can't, Sarazawa. Thank you. <laughs> um, this is, this is great. I love monster movies. Perfect. 10. Um, yeah, it's, it's hard not to, it's hard not to give it a 10. I, I, I I'm inclined to go with a 10. I, I kind of want to reserve that for epic films. I'm not sure that Godzilla is epic. Definitely the legacy is there. I think the special effects for the time are probably about the best you could expect, especially, especially in a post-war Japanese kind of setting. Uh, the movie had so much more gravity than, than the modern Godzilla films. You can see that they were chasing after that, but e you know, even with our modern technology and special effects and, you know, uh, all of that kind of thing. It just, it didn't have the same kind of weight to it that this, this film had. So I'm gonna have to, I'm gonna have to go with a 10 on this one. Yeah, I think, uh, I think I'm gonna be a Lego as well and go 10 buckets because <laughs> the legacy, this, this movie was great. Like everything, like this birthed the generation of the big monster movies and it, it was, it was perfect. Totally. I, I wasn't expecting to to love this as much as I ended up loving it, but it's this one's a ten for sure. Nate Go? What'd you give it? Well, I, I sat down to watch this movie twice. And the first time I sat down to watch it, it was a little bit late. I was a little bit tired, and I fell asleep on the subtitles before Godzilla got out there and <laughs> started moonwalking up and down Tokyo Boulevard. Uh, <laughs> if, if, during that time, I would have gave it like a two. But, you know, once I got to see the, uh, the the dance moves and then, you know, weigh it in and think about the cultural relevance, the uh, the social commentary of the weight of what happened with the war in Japan at the time, 
and how the whole thing was used as a metaphor it was brilliant so i, I gotta give it 10. yeah there is uh, absolutely no denying the impact that this movie had and and even and even if you want to criticize it for you know for as a film um I, I guess you will say it's not the greatest film, but it's it's a very important film, um, and it's definitely worthy. And and I, it, even if it doesn't hold up with the dated effects, it still holds up in the sense of watching it and really making you think about what the people went through. And it makes you appreciate it makes you appreciate it so much more. So I I gotta give it a ten. So. But thank you guys. Thank you, Wheel of Misfortune. Uh, that was a great suggestion. Is the wheel going to pick again, or are we yeah, going back? We're to going the wheel, baby. We're See going wheeling. We're going wheeling. See us wheeling and wheeling. on Monday at at nine thirty. There you go. Oh. There you go. All right. Well, for late to the party. Thank you guys. That was Godzilla. I'm Jose. I'm Isaac. I'm Jason. I'm Liz. Liz. It's great. <laughs> Josh the robot. No, oh, they're imitating the roar. <laughs> We're out. <laughs>